I uh, this is Dr. Arun Panda and uh, what I am going to do here is basically treating a patient of melasma. Uh, Shoshi is a patient of uh, very resistant melasma who came to us about uh, three months back. Uh, she has tried all kinds of ointments, uh, triple formula, the Kligman formula and things like that but nothing had actually helped her. Uh, so what exactly is melasma and how do we treat? So melasma is a condition which has got a composition which has got a hormonal component and it has got a UV component also. So basically it is said that it happens more in pregnancy or during menopause and things like that. So obviously there has to be a hormonal component. So uh, hormonal component along with UV radiations. Uh, so that is what causes a melasma. So melasma is nothing but a hyperpigmentation on the face so it can be of typically a, 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 a facial pattern wherein like the melasma starts from the nose and it extends onto the cheeks so it's like a butterfly shaped thing sometimes it can happen on the forehead also and sometimes on the mandibular areas also sometimes it extends onto the temple areas also so these are the various patterns of melasma all right now uh, there has been various treatment modalities which has been you know kind of discussed about how to treat it. Uh, so we can do chemical peels, uh, we can do lasers, we can do other things like uh, one of the most promising and uh, discussed about treatment modality for melasma is something called as a Kligman formula which is a composition which is a, uh, uh, which consists of three things as I had told uh, it contains a steroid, it contains tretin uh, hydroquinone, uh, one or two percent, and it contains uh, 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 tretin, and it also contains flucinerol, which is a steroid basically. So it basically uh, reduces the pigmentation, but it has been found that hydroquinone can actually cause rebound hyperpigmentation. That's a big issue, and of course, steroids long term usage can cause atrophy of the retinomyelin. So that's one big issue. So combining it with hydroquinone with this Kligman formula and then doing it with chemical peels and other things, obviously it delivers good results for sure. Uh, so the other treatment modalities is we can use a Q-switch NDI at 1064 nanometer. We can hit the pigmentation where the pigmentations are you know, kind of uh, uh, taken care of and the pigmentations are broken down and that is excreted. Uh, so PRP has been a modality of treatment uh, uh, for uh, melasma. So basically, if you see this patient who had come to us about two months back, uh, so she had severe pigmentation here, melasma, which I have done one session of PRP about a month back, and you can actually see a little bit of a, a quite a bit of difference and reduction of the pigmentation. Now, basically, what happens? Uh, how does PRP help here? Uh, now, it is said that uh, uh, there is a, a signal or there is a uh, cytokine called stem cell factor. So this stem cell factor is actually released from fibroblasts. All right, the fibroblasts which are there in the dermis, they release this cytokine called stem cell factor. So it's something called a soluble stem cell factor. Now what happens is this soluble cell stem cell factor, what it does is it migrates through the basal layer or the dermoepidermal junction and it goes and activates. So the receptors are actually found of this uh, soluble stem cell factor the receptors are actually found in the melanocytes so what it does is these factors they go through the dermoepidermal junction from the dermis and they go and get attached to the melanocytes there so these melanocytes are actually have they have a receptor called c kit so the c kit is there on the melanocyte so i say as soon as this is released it goes there and gets activated so because of the endogenous factors like it is as I said it is hormonal or whatever it is uh, so it goes and gets attached the, the stem cell factor goes and gets attached and it activates the melanocytes and the melanocytes once they get activated more and more melanin is produced and that is how uh, there is uh, uh, you know kind of uh, pigmentations on the face so what this PRP actually does it is basically going to interfere with this is going to interfere on the stem cell factor. So the stem cell factor is actually inhibited, and the uh, uh, the uh, the C kind, I mean the stem cell factor, it doesn't go and get attached because it is inhibited, so it doesn't go and get attached to the C kit. 
secret, which is a receptor on the melanocytes. Melanocyte. So the melanocytes are not getting activated. So because of that, the reduction. See, so it is unlike the other uh, methods, like when we are using a hydroquinone or a treatment formula which contains hydroquinone and a steroid and pretin, which causes exfoliation, when which can cause hypopigmentation and things like that. So basically, what it does, what it is doing is it is not causing that kind of hypopigmentation. So it is quite safe. And hydroquinone, as we all know, it can cause rebound hypopigmentation. Atrophic skin atrophy can be there with uh, 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 your uh, with your steroids. So those things are taken care of. So PRP has been found to be quite effective. The blood is taken and we put it in the centrifuge. We take the top part and then we centrifuge it again. That's a double centrifuge and we get high concentration of platelets. So this high concentration of platelets have been found. This the, the growth factors have been found to interfere with the stem the soluble stem cell factor, which is you know which can activate your uh, melanocytes right that is how the prp works so we're going to inject the prp on this patient and also there has been a lot of literature showing that tranexamic acid which is hemostatic agent even that helps in reduction of the pigmentation now how does tranexamic acid help us okay we know that it is basically a hemostatic agent now what exactly happens is because of uv radiation so there is something called as a plasminogen activator which has been found in the skin. So this plasminogen activator, it, uh, it induces or activates the tyrosinase enzyme. So the tyrosinase enzyme is basically, it converts your, uh, uh, it, it produces the melanin. From tyrosine it is producing melanin, right? So tyrosinase enzyme is the, so the culprit is basically the tyrosinase enzyme which is actually, you know, kind of uh, producing more and more of melanin, right? So, what uh, tranexamic acid does is basically it prevents or it interferes in the production of plasminogen activator. So, when plasminogen activator is being interfered, so your uh, tyrosinase enzyme is not getting activated and because your tyrosinase enzyme is not getting activated, your melanin is not produced. Alright, so that is how it helps in reduction of the melanin there. Right. So when we combine these two things, so oral tranexamic acid at 500 milligram OD dose also helps. But then what we also can do is we can utilize tranexamic acid in basically doing this kind of a thing where we can inject. We use something called as a microneedling therapy. We use derma pen and we can you know kind of push that into the lesions, the melasma lesions. So what it is going to do is it is going to interfere on the plasminogen activator and since it is in, uh, interfering with the plasminogen activator it is you know stopping the activation of uh, your um, uh, your tyrosinase enzyme so melanin is not produced so combined when you are talking about melasma which we know that it is a very uh, stubborn uh, problem it, it uh, so it's a very stubborn problem uh, the melasma so basically it interferes on that Okay, so melasma can be treated with other modalities. I said again, laser has a problem if you start hitting with usage and DR, there is also a problem that it might come up. So, when we are treating it without less of complications like your uh, steroid therapy or your uh, uh, laser therapy or whatever it is, so it's always better if you can treat it. Of course, it takes a longer time when we are doing PRP therapy and uh, tranexamic acid, but it is always safe, it's a safe procedure. Okay. Like for example, as I showed you that we have uh, achieved, uh, as I showed you the pre-operative picture which was there, it was quite dark, now it has lightened up. But what I am going to do is I am going to uh, inject the PRP first for her and then I am going to do the tranexamic acid with uh, microneedling or the derma pen. Uh, so HQ we are not using. No, we are not treating anything with HQ, we are not treating anything with steroids, we are not doing anything. So we are going to treat it, treat her only. So these are uh, local uh, this thing. So this patch is what we are looking at. So the uh, uh, the PRP has been activated, activated, um, uh, activated, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to inject. Pain hai, Archana? Archana? Nahi hai. So I am going to inject it there. So it is very superficial, basically into the epidermis or dermoepidermis. Okay, now uh, we have uh, put trilocaine to her and I have also given her a little local anesthetic injectable so that uh, you know it helps us to elevate the pain and things like that. So I am going to fill it up totally 
the PRP here in the dermoepidermal junction wherever there are pigmentations. Next. Okay, so uh, the newer research also says high food to some extent also helps but uh, it has not been proved as such but PRP uh, with tranexamic acid has been found as I said very effective. Post procedure the patient needs to be understanding that the sun exposure should be reduced. We should have the minimal sun exposure here. And we are going to put her on local uh, oral tranexamic acid, 500 milligram also. For how many days? So she can continue it for like the total, uh, the tranexamic acid can be continued for 2-3 to three months. Of course, uh, we have to uh, check her BTCT. Uh, so that's one thing which we should be careful about. And then only, uh, only, only on the e lesions we are injecting wherever that the lesion of melasma is there because I don't want to treat any other part because it is not a rejuvenation treatment so I'm going to inject only on the parts which is it's only in the epidermal plane only dermo epidermal plane okay. So once I am done with this, uh, that's enough. Enough. The 36 needle, uh, the needles which I have, see. Uh, and then what I am going to do here is basically I am going to put it at. Uh, so uh, so there are markings so where we can adjust. So we can do it at point. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1 mm. So I'll keep it at something like 0 0.75. So that means that every time this moves, so the needle is going to come out by a millimeter or a millimeter and a half, wherever you fix it. So I will fix it at say one millimeter, for example. So if you see closely when I'm putting, uh, it's in a slow speed, about a millimeter of the needle is actually coming out of the, uh, of the whole thing, of the cylinder. Yeah, so I can keep it at one mm. Right, and then what I'm going to do is so this is tranexamic acid. So I have put it here. So about one mm is what is getting uh, uh, into the can you hold this for me and drop it. It's 1 mm is what I have utilized here. So 1 mm is what I am creating channels. The speed is not a problem. You can have it at whatever speed. That's not a problem at all. So PRP therapy with tranexamic acid. So this is basically 100 mg tranexamic acid which I am injecting. Uh, you know, kind of pushing it into the that uh, treatment combination of PRP therapy uh, with injection or uh, micro needling or with tranexamic acid 100 milligram to uh, treat melasma, which is a very stubborn condition. Yeah, thank you so much for watching.